seriously, uh, this is a huge difference. So I have bought Topaz Photo AI with my own USD dollars. And uh, I want to show you how effective it is. We are going to try and save my wedding photo. But before we go and do that, I want to show you a couple of things to keep in mind with Topaz Photo AI and how it works and when you should use it and how you can use it and uh, some, some different uh, things there. We are gonna try pictures with a very old smartphone. We're gonna try pictures with uh, an old digital camera. Um, we are going to try a new camera with a new sensor and of course my wedding photo. So if you're looking to buy the Topaz Photo AI because you think it can save you, save your pictures, just stick around for the for the entire video and um, let's see if I can share some tips and tricks for you. If you have any questions during the video, please remain seated and just type them into the comment field down below. Okay, with that said, let's just dive in. So here we are inside Topaz Photo AI. I am running the latest version 1.3.0 and we're going to start by adding some pictures. So let's take these. Okay, so here we go. This is a picture from, from a very old smartphone. I will leave the, the photo details on the screen somewhere. Um, this is obviously uh, a very low resolution. And what we can see from this is that the Topaz Photo AI automatically detects that we want to enhance or we probably want to enhance the resolution here. It's not because this image is uh, very noisy, but it's definitely not a very high resolution. I think it's just 2.1 megapixels or something like that. So this is something we want to work with. We can see that it has um, output size of 1.1 megabyte. Um, so the, and the original is 712 kilobytes. So this is definitely a very low resolution picture. You can set the different types of views here. So you can have side by side view, you can have a split view and you can have um, one view or you can have the result view basically and then you can see uh, how the original looked. I'm gonna go with split view because that's the best for the purpose we have right now. As we can see when I'm dragging the line thing here, uh, we can see that the, the image is changing and it's definitely noticeable at the with the text on this sign here and um, you can see that it gets much more clear and when we go all the way to the left, we can see the entire, the result of the picture, right? So in this case, if we zoom in, we can see that a lot of the details have really been enhanced here. So this is the enhanced resolution feature with Topaz Photo AI. And it's, it's really, really impressive. It, it can bring back details um, that, that is very, um, very blurry, as you can see here. So this is a very good example of how, how well it's doing. Um, we can do, we can try to sharpen the image as well by just adding the sharpness here. But what we then start to see is some artifacts around the numbers here. And that's, and sharpen can also actually add noise to the image uh, that we don't want, right? So actually the autopilot settings is probably the best for this image. Um, except that we can do, um, we can just maximize the, the resolutions upscale here or the enhanced resolution. So if we do that, we can see that the, the image will get much bigger and um, the file size is, is going from 712 kilobytes to 40 megabytes. That's insane. But then again, we would get a much higher uh, resolution image. Let me just take a kind of a similar picture. So this is um, this is an image taken with the Canon X's 70, as far as I remember. I'll also bring the details here on the screen somewhere. And um, this is also just a JPEG. And if we zoom in here, we can see that everything is getting very blurry. Um, but what we want to do here is we want to try to bring some details back into this image. Um, but let's start from, from zero here. And we can see that the, the autopilot settings in Tobis Photo AI has already selected enhanced resolution. And uh, when we just drag the slider here, we can see that the resolution is much better, right? So the details are really coming uh, out in the picture. Uh, we can even see it in the waves here uh, at the sea. And it's very noticeable at the, the mountains here or the stones, right? So this is, this is 
super amazing. And again, we can um, go into something like Lightroom or Darktable and just try to enhance the colors and, and all this stuff afterwards. But again, this is a JPEG, so not the same possibilities as if we had a raw image, okay? But let's try to, uh, this is even worse. This is um, from a, si a file size perspective, it's, it's 135 kilobytes, right? And this is only upscaling to 200, um, 254 kilobytes. So it's not even upscaling or it's not even taking that much space uh, by enhancing this photo this much. But let's just try to maximize it and we can see that the image will get around uh, 9.2 megabytes and that's that's uh, definitely acceptable um, but let me just show you what happens if we zoom in here uh, because that's quite amazing so let's start out here with the um, far background and if I drag the slider here once again we can see that houses are actually uh, I know this is not super amazing in terms of that we can see through the windows and stuff, but we don't want to do that. That's stalker territory. We don't want to go there. Okay. So, um, but it's still, we, we can really see that there's structures here and, and buildings compared to this, right? So this, this is, uh, this is huge improvement. So let's have a look at the cliff that's actually in focus here. And let's start with this area here. So going from this to this, you can see that there's definitely some artifacts happening here. And this is why you might not want to uh, use this tool for uh, just upscaling the image and then cropping it to infinity <laughs> or, or cropping it too, too tightly because you will see artifacts, especially around um, like contours like this. Um, and it will never become completely clear, but but seriously, uh, this is a huge difference, right? So so the upscaling is is uh, really really working here, and uh, I'm zoomed in at 400% here, so it's super tightly zoomed. But let's have a look at the uh, at the cliffs here because those are amazing as well. So if we just go here and I drag the slider, you can see that all the it. You, you begin to see that this is actually a cliff, right? There's, there's structure here besides pixel. Look at this. Look at the difference here. I think this is quite amazing because if we look at the, the structure here and then we drag the slider, we can see things happening like, pay attention to, to this area here. You can see that this is just pixels, right? But if we just drag the slider, we can see that there actually some vegetation stuff thingy here and the resolution is just amazing so this is this is definitely a game changer and keep in mind if we just you can see there's a lot of artifacts happening here but keep in mind that if we were just to uh, use the image as this uh, you would probably not see the artifacts that much right um, it's definitely something else than than this right so yeah, a uh, huge difference. And this is definitely more usable than this. Okay, so that was the second picture. Okay, so this is shot with a Canon 50D with a kit lens, so it's nothing special. And uh, the amount of noise in this image is just uh, crazy, right? We can see it from, from this uh, distance or distance. It's on, at this fit level, fit level of zoom is 45%. We can see a huge amount of, um, uh, distortion or noise in the image and we can see that um, the Topaz Photo AI has automatically selected the the raw remove noise um, as a feature or the, to to increase the image quality here and if we expand this we can see that it has detected strong and it wants to use 5 as the value for strength and 72 for detail so it's definitely looking into trying to uh, enhance the detail of this image and um, let's let's try to just um, zoom in on this area here and see what happens. So you can see we have all kinds of colors in the noise here. It's it's not um, it's not uncommon and definitely not with this uh, sensor on this camera. 
and you can see we have red, magenta, we have all the all kinds of noise noise colors here. And if I just drag the slider here, look at the difference. It keeps the detail in the leaf. It actually brings back some detail and just removes that crazy amount of noise. And this is at zoom level 200. If I go even um, closer here at 800, we still see this to this, right? So this is, this is super amazing. And if we go back here, just zoom all the way out and we look at the, the before image and then we go to the after image. And in addition to this, this is uh, handled at raw level. So, or this is a raw picture, which means we can bring this picture into Lightroom um, and further edit the picture. One thing to keep note here of is that when you edit pictures with Topaz uh, Photo AI, and if you use Darktable, you will not be able to uh, load the pictures into Darktable. There's something happening with the DNG file that Topaz Photo AI produces that's, that uh, Darktable doesn't like. I'm not really sure. I haven't tested it with the newest version, so it might be fixed, but th this is just something that you need to keep in mind. Um, I have I had no problem in loading it into Lightroom or Photo Photoshop to further process the images. So that's definitely a solution for you. But if you're using Darktable, just keep it in mind, it might not work. So the enhancements in this image will bring the image from 22 megabytes to uh, 85 megabytes. So that's quite a difference, but still the difference in the image quality is, is uh, super crazy as well. So let's just play around a bit here and uh, let's try to add the sharpen and uh, add a strong sharpen. And uh, what we can see here is actually that um, now it's, it's done. We can see that when we zoom in, uh, when we add the sharpen to this, it actually reintroduces some noise here. And uh, this is something you need to be aware of when working with this, um, uh, with the, with the Topaz Photo AI, that it actually, using the autopilot settings is most of the time for the best. So uh, you can play around with the other, uh, with the other stuff here, uh, other settings, and definitely you can enhance the resolution. We can just try to enhance the resolution here and say we have a low resolution and we want to just maximize the resolution. Um, we can see that it actually does, jo it does its job, but it creates artifacts around some of the contours here. And this is getting super noticeable um, where we have these leaves that are crossing each, each other. And But if we zoom out, then we can see that the image is still very, very beautiful. And um, then we have higher resolution, right? This is taking the image from 22 megabytes to 3.1 gigabytes. Um, I can't really imagine that we would go this far, uh, but this definitely takes the image to a huge uh, resolution that can be used for printing and stuff. Um, so still a very, very good tool. If we have a low resolution or a semi-low resolution image that we want to print in like uh, building size, uh, then this, this, can be, this can be useful. Okay, so moving away from this image, uh, let's go to an image um, indoor um, with a Sony A7 IV camera. So this is a, a fairly new camera and the sensor is definitely much newer than the Canon 50D. Um, this shot is, I think it's around uh, 1000 ISO. I'll put the details on, on the image here as well. But but this is this is quite a beautiful image and probably I wouldn't do too much here besides trying to, if, if I didn't have um, Topaz Photo AI, I would probably try to minimize the noise a bit in Lightroom or Darktable. Um, but what happens when you use those tools um, in Lightroom or Darktable, it kind of adds this little bit of blur to the image and um, it's really hard to sharpen that uh, that blur. But what we can see here is that, uh, this is kind of interesting because what we can see here is that the autopilot settings has detected that we want to remove the raw uh, noise or raw remove noise. And we want to use the sharpen here. 
as well. And if we just expand this, we can see that it's there's not too much noise. This is uh, the Sony sensors are very good at handling noise, so it, it doesn't want to remove. It, it's not like it's a heavy duty thing that it needs to do here, but it still wants to remove some noise. But the sharpening here is is uh, set to 40. And uh, one thing that you should uh, really keep in mind here is that this this image is shoot, shot in just uh, with a wall behind it. So there's a little bit of bokeh, um, but it's not too much. Um, but Topaz Photo AI will automatically detect the subjects of the image, whether it's flowers like this or people or something like this. And it will only enhance or sharpen uh, the subject. You can disable or enable this feature here, but if you have a beautiful image with some bokeh, um, you should not remove this subject only feature because then it will try to sharpen the entire image as if it was shot on like F10 or F11 or something that you, where you want to keep um, um, the entire frame sharp and that creates a huge amount of artifacts that are just um, yeah, it, it's not usable. So you can use it to correct your bouquet, but then again, why would you make bouquet, right? So let's have a look at the, at the changes here. So I'm gonna zoom into this flower because this is the, the flower that is in focus. And we can see, if I just drag the slider, we can see that it removes the noise perfectly and it really uh, sharpens the image around the flower here. So even though we're only having 1000 ISO on this image, um, there's something to gain from using the photo AI um, or the Topaz photo AI. I'm really impressed with this. And again, this is a raw image, so we can further process it with uh, Lightroom and hopefully Darktable at some point, but definitely Lightroom uh, to bring forward some more colors or whatever we want to do with the image. So moving to an outdoor image, and this is, um, I think this is shot at. Uh, I think this is shot at 400 millimeters. Uh, I'll put the details here as well, but this is um, definitely with some zoom, and um, we have a very beautiful squirrel here, and we can see that wants to raw remove the noise. It wants to sharpen the image as well. So uh, we can see that it has detected. It has tried to mask the um, squirrel here. So this is going to be interesting to see how well it sharpens this image. Um, and if we just zoom, let's, let's zoom in here because this is, if we look at the mask here, we can see that the eyes is usually something that we want. The eyes and the nose um, is not being sharpened, so it can create an artifact here. This is quite interesting, right? Because if we look at this, um, at 400% zoom and we drag the slider we can see that the tiny amount of noise that's in the image is getting removed but when we get to the eye here it's actually blurring the eye a bit let's just try to disable this yeah now you can see I disabled the, um, the subject only feature for the sharpening and let's just turn it down a bit here because that's quite heavy and as we can see, um, we have artifacts happening here. So it's definitely sharpening the image. And if we zoom out here, we can see that the, the image is getting more sharp and, and that's quite good. I don't think if, if we were to use the image in a crop like something like this, um, it would not be be an issue. Uh, it's actually quite good, right? But uh, it, this is what you need to keep in mind you, when you use the sharpening stuff. Um, it might look like the scroll. Uh, in this case, there's a lot of fur and a lot of um, uh, things happening here. So it's not a big problem. But if we had a more clear background, uh, it could look like that the squirrel was just being put there with uh, Photoshop or something. So so um, because it creates these weird artifacts around the edges or the contours of, of the subject. But in this case, uh, I think this looks good. Okay, so let's take uh, another image. Um, we are getting to the wedding photo in just a sec, I promise. This is an image of my 
uh, one of my kids dancing and I just thought he looked so cool so I just wanted to keep him get an image from him um, but if we look at the image the amount of noise here is just crazy right um, and um, the tool here has selected that we should use raw remove noise so I'm just gonna bring the slider over and have a look at the, the door here in the background it's getting from all kinds of weird colors that looks like a CRT screen from the 90s or a television that just didn't have any good reception to a clear image, right? It's very, very cool. And when we get all the way over and see the, the result, the final result of the image, this is amazing. Let me just zoom in a bit here and just let's have a look at the, um, the door here first. Have a look at the at the noise just getting removed here. This is a 12,800 ISO. So there's definitely noise introduced into this picture. And this is also a raw picture. So what I would do here is I would remove the noise with the Topaz Photo AI, and then I would go into Lightroom and bring a forward, um, or add the, try to bring forward some shadows and stuff and play around with the pictures so that we could get an even, be even better image because the, the data is the data is still in the image, so we just need to enhance the um, we just need to enhance the colors and and the light here. But have a look at something interesting here. When I pull the slider all the way over here, we can see that his hair and the logo of the headphones are getting some weird uh, artifacts happening here, and this is because the the sun is shining directly into a small uh, tiny bit of his hair here which creates this reflection that has the same colors in it as the noise has. So if we look at the whites here, we can see there's a lot of magenta, pink, even um, purple, all these kinds of stuff that's usually in noise. And if we look at his hair, we can see the same colors here. So when the AI is trying to remove it, it will get somewhat um, uh, distorted or it's not, it's not doing it's not being able to remove it very well basically um because it gets confused and i would too so but again if we use it as this picture we can definitely try to fix this these issues in photoshop or uh, lightroom even um so this is not a concern for me i think this looks this this looks definitely better than this version right uh very very cool Okay, so uh, let's try to save my wedding photo. Um, our wedding photos uh, was taken uh, outside, as you can see here, and um, the weather was beautiful, but something happened uh, to the camera. We just basically, we didn't hire a photographer. We just basically put the camera into one of the relatives um, uh, hands and just shoot some pictures and we'll just YOLO it and see what happens. Uh, we didn't imagine that the amount of noise in these pictures was just being this crazy. This is um, at this sensor, this is the Canon 50D with uh, I think it's the 3200 ISO and um, you can see the amount of noise here is just crazy, right? It's it's actually ruining the picture, and we can even see, and we can even see that there's some dust on the lens. So there's these dark spots here. So yeah, well, this this is what happens, right? Um, by the way, pro tip: if you don't want many people to come to your wedding, just pick a remote location as we did. <laughs> uh, anyways, let's try to see what what we can do with this picture. Um, if we zoom in a bit here, I want to show you uh, how well it's doing here. You can see that it has detected that we have people in the in the frame because it has a recover faces uh, turned on, and we have the raw remove noise. We don't have sharpen, and um, there was a difference between the last version that I used. The first, I think, it was 1.2 point something. Um, it would actually enable sharpening here, and but that created artifacts. So. There's definitely some changes in the 1.3 uh, to the algorithm and the way that it's handling this autopilot settings. So that's good to see. If I just drag the slider here and go all the way out here, we can see that the image just cleaned up from all this weird noise. This is like, um, 
looking at the previous the previous uh, image here um, and seeing the noise level at 12,800 ISO and then we have the old Canon sensor at 3200 ISO here it's it's just insane right so this let's just try to enhance the entire picture like this now we can see that it's actually not um, a bad reception in the television but but this is uh, this is a usable, usable picture or a usable image we can see that this file size here is going from uh, 23 megabytes to uh, 84 megabytes okay so let's just try to have a look at the um, at, at my uh, suit here uh, and you can see that it's actually able to just remove all the noise from the suit and bring back the details of uh, the fabric here and that's that's quite amazing but now let me show you something that can bring nightmares to your uh, mind um, this is nightmare fuel if we just go here you can see that there's some weird stuff going on with the faces right weird stuff um, the thing is that it's trying to recover the faces if i just um, remove this 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 is something i would probably prefer because when we have the recover faces on it, it tries to enhance the contours of the face just to make them stand out but there's, when there's uh, strings of light or something happening here, you can see there's just a piece of light happening, um, or there's just a piece of light here uh, on my wife's nose, and it, and the mouth here is just, wow, uh, that's not how she looks. But anyways, we can also see that uh, one face is selected here, and if we just go here, we can see that it has rightfully deselected my face, because I'm not very pretty. Uh, but let me just try to recover my face as well. And this is what's happening, you can see, weird stuff is going on here so this is the limitation with the Fo topaz photo ai i would definitely be able to use this image over this image but i would not be able to crop the image and really bring back uh, all the details from this part of um, at this cropping size so if you expect to be able to crop your images uh, heavily after you have been using uh, Topaz Photo AI, I, I I don't think that uh, that will that will happen. And you at least you need a better or a raw image uh, basically. But again, this this uh, definitely saves our uh, wedding photo um, compared to to this, and we can even upscale um, just to by four or something like this. Uh, this will. Uh, mean that um, the photo will reach 1.4 gigabytes uh, we would probably not enhance it four times I would also take this photo into Lightroom and further enhance the image and just patch up uh, or heal uh, some of these areas where we can see that there's dust on the lens in conclusion uh, Tobas Photo AI has saved our wedding photos and uh, I hope you can see why um, this is a very very amazing tool if you want to try it before buying it you can try to download and install the trial version and um, I would recommend that you do that because there's a huge amount of uh, difference between what types of images that you're using so the difference between the trial version and the full version is of course that you can't save the images that you've uh, recovered from uh, or enhanced via the, uh, the photo AI um, and I think that's quite fair so uh, let me know what you think in the comments below and uh, let me know if you have any questions or something that we need to try uh, I would be happy to, to do that uh, but uh, I made this video because I was kind of um, uh, I'm always a bit skeptic from the um, uh, marketing stuff happening on um, on their websites uh, and I wanted to see it for myself so uh, I hope that this will help someone this video is not sponsored by any means from Topaz uh, Photo AI so I can say whatever I want I really hope this video helped you out subscribe to the channel if you want more of this I'm not really I don't really know what I'm doing here so I'm gonna post a lot of different stuff but um, if you want to follow along Please subscribe, like the video if you liked the video. You can dislike the video if you didn't like it. Uh, it will just make me sad. Bye 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 bye.